The announcement yesterday of some minor details about Chapter 6 left a lot of people excited, a lot of people disappointed, and quite a few people confused as well, all for various different reasons. Excitement, because a new chapter has been confirmed for Battlefield 5, and that means we'll see support for at least another few months. Disappointment, because the proposed weapon balance changes, they aren't the full revert that the community wants, although it can be argued that the position the balance will end up in is very close to what the community wants. And confusion, because of the decisions DICE appears to be taking with the new weapons coming with Chapter 6. Something admittedly I didn't realise until DICE had made their announcement and then I'd made my video yesterday, because I only very quickly read the statement, is that for Chapter 6, DICE is going to be moving more weapons into the Chapter Rank progression system and moving them away from the Tides of War progression system. This means that instead of weekly community-wide challenges being available to unlock new items, those weapons will be placed into a rank-based system individual to each player who will then unlock the weapons through tiers at their own pace. Now, there's several points here that we need to consider, but looking at it from afar, I don't think this is a good idea, and I think DICE has made another mistake here. First of all, let's set the scene here. Having weapons as part of the chapter rank system, that started with chapter 5, the chapter that we've just finished. There were two pistols and one primary weapon added to the ranks as part of the launch of the Pacific Theatre. Other weapons, they were simply handed out to players on day one of the chapter going live. That gave them several more theatre-specific weapons that they could use. And then a few more weapons were part of the usual Tides of War handout system. This means there were three different ways that players could obtain weapons for the new chapter instead of the usual one system, the Tides of War. Now the reason DICE is going to double down on chapter rewards for chapter 6 is because they saw a doubling in the weapon ownership of players after chapter 5. This means that more players obtained more weapons in that chapter than they had in previous ones and the placement of three weapons into the chapter rank system was probably the main cause of that. This seems to suggest that the Tides of War system wasn't helping certain players unlock weapons effectively, since they were only available for one week, and then they'd be taken away before being added to the customization menus a week later to be unlocked with company coin. The limited availability of these weapons has led to less players being able to get their hands on them, Maybe these players just simply had less time to play the game during Chapter 5. I mean, we all have lives, we've all got other things we're supposed to do. And of course, during Chapter 5, we did have the holiday season. So lots of people, even though they play games that they got for Christmas or they have more time over Christmas to play games, of course, you still spend time doing other things throughout the holiday period. So maybe there were a couple of weeks missed here and there. Now, the solution that DICE is proposing is to add more weapons in Chapter 6 into the Chapter Rank system. That keeps the weapons available for unlock throughout the entire chapter, so any player who plays the game and works their way up the ranks, they can get those weapons. There's no time-limited aspect to it anymore, other than the fact that the weapons are contained within Chapter 6. If you didn't unlock them throughout the Chapter Rank through Chapter 6, then you would miss out on them until a later date but they are going to go in the armory for you to unlock with company coin. Now, if that was the end of the story here, I think we could all walk away happy that DICE was moving away from a limited time weapon availability towards a system that leaves players in control of how quickly or slowly that they unlock things in Battlefield 5. That would be totally cool. But unfortunately, that's not the end of the story. Of course you knew that wasn't the end of the story because... Well, this video is only four and a half minutes long. We're nowhere near the 10 minute mark yet. The major issue with this move from DICE is that you're able to skip the chapter tiers in the chapter rank by using boins. That's the in-game currency that can be bought for real money. This means in chapter six, when it goes live, players will be able to unlock more of the new weapons straight away if they choose to spend some of their money. They'll unlock them pretty much instantly as well if they just buy their way through the entire tiering system and unlock all of them. And that circumvents the entire progression system in the process. And they'll have those weapons before many of the other players of the game. Now at this point, 
it's really a matter of whether you care or not about buying weapons for real money. But there will be some people out there who literally don't care at all. Maybe they don't have enough time to grind through the chapter rank system to unlock the weapons, so they just throw down some cash and they just get the weapons, whatever. But at the same time, there will be plenty of people who do care about this. And already I have seen a lot of players in the community expressing concern that by allowing players to purchase new weapons straight away, there's an element of being able to buy power creeping into Battlefield 5, which is something that DICE made very clear wasn't part of their plans before this game launched. The concern is that these weapons encased within the chapter rank system for chapter 6, they could be more powerful, they could be more impactful, more helpful than the current weapons available in the game. And that means players who pay to unlock them straight away, they will get a perceived advantage over other players who aren't willing to buy them and are just more than happy to work through the levels to unlock them via gameplay. Now I am making a large assumption here that these weapons will be powerful and better than the current ones, which may not be true, but I think the point still stands that by allowing players to buy weapons early, that's an example of buying power in a video game, and that creates an unfair playing field. What's more is that right now, we don't know how large the time commitment will be to unlock these new weapons just by playing the game. DICE has said they will be making changes to the earn rates of chapter XP, that's the XP you need to unlock tiers for the chapter rank, and that by finishing higher on the leaderboard, you will get more chapter XP than you did in chapter 5, potentially making the ranking up faster than it has been before, but we still don't have any concrete information on that. So right now we've got this huge disparity where some players will just go and buy their way to the new weapons whilst the rest of the player base grinds away to get them. How many hours grinding is that going to take? What if some of the weapons are locked into the higher tiers of the chapter rank, maybe in the late 20s and early 30s? That could take a lot of in-game playtime to get those weapons. Of course, it could very well be that all of these new weapons in Chapter 6 are going to be put into the earlier chapter rank tiers, making them much easier to unlock for all players, and then perhaps lessening the appeal for players to just pull out their wallets and buy some tiers to get them straight away. If it only takes a couple of hours playtime to get the weapons over a few days when the new chapter starts, then that's really much less of an issue. It is still an issue, however, because DICE has created this opportunity for players to buy their way to power in a game where they said they wouldn't do that, but the impact of it is softened if the barriers to unlocking the power are much lower than we fear. If the weapons are pushed into the higher tiers of the chapter rank system, though, that's when this does become a problem for Battlefield 5 and for the players of the game as well. That's where people are going to start claiming that Battlefield 5 has implemented pay-to-win mechanics. And really, after all the issues DICE had with Star Wars Battlefront 2 and the whole loot box saga, I really don't think that's something that they want to be labelled with again. Personally, I don't think adding weapons, or gadgets for that matter, into the chapter rank system is a good idea. And from the reaction overnight to the news, it appears that the current active community around Battlefield 5 isn't particularly receptive to the idea either. The Tides of War system is time restricted for item unlocks, yes, but could that time restriction not have been removed and then weapons distributed by the system that was built to distribute content? Why did we need to move weapons into the chapter rank system when removing the timer on Tides of War would have had exactly the same effect, but without the pay to win argument. If the Tides of War weekly timer was removed and all the rewards stayed active for all players to just work through at their own pace during Chapter 6, would that not have been a much better solution? DICE said that they saw double the weapon ownership in Chapter 5 due to mechanics allowing players to unlock weapons at their own pace. So why not continue to allow them to do that in the Tides of War system, but just remove the time restriction. Then that way, you wouldn't have to put them in the chapter rank system where you can unlock tiers for real world money. You'd completely remove the buying power argument. To me, it seems like there was a much more player friendly solution to this situation that wouldn't have caused yet another debate around Battlefield 5.
Overall, I don't think this is a good move from the DICE team. They've created more anger and controversy for themselves and for the game in a time where they can ill afford it. I am glad that the team is going to be almost reverting the weapon balance and the TTK back to where it was before update 5.2. That's a good move. But that news has sort of been swept aside because of other decisions taken. Honestly, it's like with Battlefield 5. There cannot be something good without something bad happening at the same time. There always must be something happening with this game that gets people annoyed. There are so many changes happening with each update that I'm left wondering at the moment if DICE really has a proper vision for this game and what they want to do with it moving forwards. They keep changing direction and for new players or returning players or indeed anyone looking in from the outside, it's really not a good look. And it's not a situation that I'd personally want to enter if I wasn't already involved in it. These kinds of swings backwards and forwards, they just don't inspire any confidence. And they don't help players trust that DICE is doing the right thing for the game or the franchise. I think sticking with the core values the game launched with, that's going to help Battlefield 5 get through 2020 and out the other side. I kind of think we're past the point of a complete recovery now for this game, but I don't think it's ever too late to regain something and stand up as a decent first-person shooter. But my concern actually has turned to whatever's coming next. We might be 14 or 15 months away from the announcement of the next Battlefield game, but how many people who've interacted with Battlefield 5 are going to give that next game a chance based on their experiences that they've had with this game? I'm not sure this puts Battlefield as a franchise in a good position moving forwards. I'd love to be wrong and say that people will immediately forget everything that's happened here this time around, but with the issues being so persistent and the constant controversy that this game has been entangled with, I'm not sure there are going to be as many people as keen to jump aboard the hype train for Battlefield 6 or, or whatever it ends up being. As I say, I hope I'm wrong, but this time... The controversy's gone on for so long and the issues have been so present that I'm not really sure what's going to happen. But there we go. Thanks very much for watching today, guys. If you enjoyed the video, leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you're thinking. Possibly drop a rating as well. A like would be amazing, but the dislike button is there if you want to use it. It's always appreciated when you guys interact with the videos. But I'll catch you all in the next one.